All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely subscribe here on YouTube. Make sure to ring that bell so you get those new notifications whenever I drop a new video. Also, if you learned something, uh, please hit me off with a like. So, uh, today I'm in Power BI. And I consider this, this is part two of my uh, top 10, bottom 10 series um, in, in Power BI here and how we're going to use DAX to calculate um, that top 10 products by sales and bottom 10 products by sales. So if, if you look here, I've got this KPI section, which is new. I didn't have this in the last video. And you're going to learn how to calculate, uh, how to get that aggregated number for your top 10 product sales how to get the aggregated number for your bottom 10 product sales and you'll get a percentage, um, your top 10 product sales percentage. So your top 10 product sales um, is, this, is this dollar amount. Uh, what percent is that um, as compared to the entire sales um, for, for all products? So 29.2%. And so, you know, if, there, if there's a tie included in this number here, are ties and it included everywhere are ties. So what I mean by that, obviously, um, if you look at my top and uh, bottom 10 here, I have 10 values, right? So what happens on days when I have, let's say, if we go here, let's pick um, a second. Um, you'll notice that I have in my bottom 10, I'll have ties here. So cast iron four has 16, 531 and so does cover two product, right? So I'm showing 11 values here, right? I still consider that part of my top 10. If we look down here, you'll see there's a tie for eighth, right? I still want those to show uh, in my viz and in the table. And so this functionality, you can't get out of the box in uh, Power BI. So I'm gonna show you how you incorporate ties, right? Um, in my data set, it's rare to have ties, so I want them included when they do show up because um, these are legitimately in the top 10 uh, from my perspective. So a quick change, let's look at the fields here. So I covered these calculations in the first video, how you get the bottom 10 products uh, how, you know, that, uh, that feed this, um, that feed our two um, uh, visualizations here. Bottom 10 feeds this, top 10 feeds here. Uh, and it's very dependent upon how you rank your product. So slight little change here for product rank ascending, which we will use to, uh, to power um, our tables and uh, the values that show up here in this viz. So let's take a look at this. So what we've done here to calculate the product rank uh, ascending, and so ranking is ascending, which means that the smallest values get the lowest numbers, right? The smallest values get the lowest numbers when you're ranking by ascending. And so what I've done here, um, if my calendar table, if I have a filter going on here, I want to, when, when I do the ranking, ascending, I want to take off one. I want to subtract one from it. If I'm not filtered, then just rank uh, ascending as normal. So I'll show you why. Let's take this one off. And if I look down here, you'll see that, um, let me get uh, rid of this real quick. You'll see that I have, um, um, I have all of these tied for one. Right, I don't. I don't want these products because they've been they've been filtered out. And I start at two, and you'll see that ten is at um, screw seven. So if you look up here, you'll see that there is a you know dial three that I want incorporated. There's eleven values here, and so by by subtracting one from the uh, from the ranking, I basically push the eleventh value down so it has a rank of ten. So it gets included. So if we go back, uh, let's go to the product rank ascending. And if I take off one here, you'll see screw seven moved down to nine. And now I can bring in that dial three. And now I have, I have, um, I actually have 11 values, right? Um, but there's a tie here and that's okay. I, I want, I want that, uh, that 10th value brought in. So, so that's why we made a little change here for a product rank ascending. Okay. 
Now, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go through um, um, each one of these, not, not these calcs. I'm going to go through uh, calcs lesson two here. Let's look at the sum of sales for our top 10 products. And so this is going to power uh, really quick. This is going to power this right here. This is the number here. So our top 10 products, if I were to change this, right, you see how this updates. Our top 10 products are changing, and this is the associated sum with those, uh, with those changes. And so if I go in here to sum, uh, uh, sum the sales of top 10 products, you can see, here, here's what I'm doing. And let's start Let's uh, start in and then move out. I'm using the top in function. So at top in, I can specify how many. I'm hard coding 10 in here because I want um, uh, the, the top 10 values. And I know that there aren't any ties in my top 10, so I just hard code 10. So we're doing a group by. So I want to group by... Um, a company, my company sales data, that's my main table. And then I want to group by the product in that company sales data. And then I'm going to calculate the sum of the sales price. So I'm creating like a virtual table in memory, right? Grouping by product, summing sales price, and taking the top 10. So I've got, I've got a, um, a virtual table here. And so when we move to the outside, we're saying sum the sales price um, from this virtual table. So it gives me one aggregated number and we're calling that sum of sales of top 10 products. So that number uh, feeds this value right here, right? Top 10 products. So hopefully you followed along there and let's take a look at bottom 10. So bottom 10's uh, similar, similar but different here. So I'm going to look at um, sum of sales of bottom 10. So same concept. I just have some, uh, some uh, comments in here. But let's let's start on the inside here. So instead of hard coding 10, right? Instead of saying top 10 and hard coding, I have another value in here that's going to give me either 10 or 11, right? So it's going to display 11 on the days where there's a tie for sales price. Otherwise, it's going to show 10. So it's it's similar to the top 10 products. I'm just putting in a a variable here, right? And still, we're grouping by uh, our company sales data, right? We're grouping by the product. And, and all I'm saying is uh, when, you, when you group by, I want to take the top either 10 or 11 based upon the product rank. So if you take a look at that, you're basically building this table. Take the top 10 or 11, again, based upon whether you have ties or not, right? You're grouping by company sales data products, which is, which is here, and we're taking the top 10 based upon this ranking. So you're basically creating this table in memory, and then you're summing, you come out here to the calculator, you're summing the company sales price. So, so you're summing all of these, um, these values here in that virtual table, and you're just getting an aggregated sum, 33,419. And so if we look here, that's our 33,419. And so if I, if I go here, I'm just going to uh, remove all the filters. And so I'm going to bring in Excel just to show you, right? If I look at my top 10 products uh, by sales, you'll see, and, and I know this data intimately, um, I'm getting 24, 247, 217, which is what I'm showing here. And in my bottom 10 products by overall sales, I'm getting 32, 32 6, 33. So I know that's right, okay? Uh, let's take a look. So now top 10 products. Um, well, let's let's look at this value right here. Um, let, let me first show you what, what's going on here. I need a way to determine uh, if I have ties or not. And so the best way in, in my bottom 10 products by sales. And so if you recall, going back here, this is the value. Oops, not, not here. Right. This uh, count rows less than 10 by ascending sort. So that's going to return 10 or 11. So if we look at this right here, this card right here, I'm not filtered, so I only have 10 values. You could say I have 10 values here, but let's, again, go to a day where I know I have a tie. So I'm just going to go in here, go to May 2nd. You'll see this is 11. This count is 11 now, right? And you'll see I have 11 values here. So this is the variable that I'm using in, um, in this DAX formula here. If I have, uh, if I'm filtered, if I'm on a day that returns 11 top 10 values, right, I want to return the top 11. 
if I'm on a day that is not where there aren't any ties for sales price, I want to return 10. So that's that's going that's what's going on there. I have to use this uh, this count rows less than 10 in order to calculate my bottom 10. So hopefully I didn't confuse you too much there. Rewatch the video if you get caught up on something or or ask a question in the comments. So this last one here, this is fairly simple. Top 10 product uh, sales percentage. Um, very simple. All you need to do, well, first let's let's sum all products. Sorry, uh, sum of all products. This is very simple, right? I'm just sum summing uh, the sales price, and I'm using this all. So I'm saying, you know, uh, with no filters at all on company sales data, sum the sales price, and that's just going to give me um, the the sum of all my uh, sales for the entire table. Right, I need that in order to calculate my percentage. So if I were to go here just really quick, just to show you that number doesn't change because I'm using all. If I were to take a, uh, let's throw a card in here and uh, whoops, let's not do that. Let's control Z. But I just want to throw a card in here. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And then I'm just gonna throw some all products in there. So you'll see this number Let's bring this over here, 83.11. Now I'm going to go over here and just format this really quick. So you'll see that's the number of all my product sales. And if I change the filter, right, that doesn't change, right? I need that to stay as my denominator in order to calculate a percentage of my top 10 product uh, sales, right? So that stays the same. Hopefully I have proven that. And so in order to calculate top 10 product sales, very simple, it's just a division function, right? I'm gonna divide my sum of sales of top 10 products, and that, that is the numerator, the denominator is what I just showed you, sum all products, and if I have a division by error, uh, division uh, by zero error, just show zero, right? Fairly straightforward there. So hopefully you could follow that. So now, really quick, I wanna show uh, how in table form, we can get our top 10 products by sales and bottom 10 products by sales. Fairly simple here for this table. All I've done is uh, have a table, right? I've dragged in product from my main table, right? And then we have the sales price. And so if I look at the filters on this, uh, this is pretty straightforward. On product, what I'm saying is uh, return the top 10 uh, values by sales price. Fairly straightforward. I mean, that's... Uh, that's uh, about as basic as it gets. I don't have any ties, so I don't have to do anything special. But if I come over here to my bottom 10, okay, I have to do uh, something, uh, um, we have to change it up a little bit, right? So so let's take a look. So you see I have my product rank ascending. And again, I covered what product rank ascending does earlier here, right? It's gonna uh, give me, it's gonna take one off of the rank, right? It's gonna take one off of that rank if um, if I'm filtered by order date, otherwise it's just gonna give me the regular rank ascending sort, right? So my lowest values get, um, get the lowest numbers here, as you can see. So okay, I've included that number here so you can see what's going on. And so again, I put in the product, the sales price, and the product rank ascending just so you can see that. And then for filtering on here, I say show items show items when the value is less than or equal to 10, right? Which uh, my product rank is sending, all my items are less than or equal to 10 here, and not zero. So you're saying, why do I have and not zero? So let's take the zero away and apply the filter, and you'll see, oops, less than or equal to 10 and not zero. So when I apply that, I should have, oh, because I'm not filtered here. So let me let me show you when I'm filtered, that's why. So here we go. So you'll see that I'm filtered. And when I'm filtered, all of the products that are filtered out of this, uh, this order date, right? They weren't ordered during this time frame. They get a value of zero and I just don't wanna show them, right? So by saying uh, and is not zero, I just hide those. So this is a pretty handy way, again, to show that bottom 10 products by sales. 
and incorporating ties. That's the key, right? The key is incorporating ties. If I go here again, um, I want to go to 5 2 2017. Right, I have 11 values. So you can see I have 11 values that show up here because I want to include ties in my top 10. Same here. So that's why um, I have to create this product rank ascending to help me get uh, all of those values to include ties, right? So this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Again, go back and watch the first video that shows you how to calculate these calcs. And if, you know, if something wasn't clear, go back and, and watch this video. This has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Get out there and do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching.